Hello, and welcome to Code Pro, your source for clear and effective programming tutorials. Today, we are going to be continuing the iOS tutorial series covering collection views. And uh, let's just take a look at what we're going to build today. We're going to build something that looks like this, uh, an application that has a collection view with a vertical layout that can display cells and some contents in the cells. Um, and let's go over the learning objectives for this lesson. We want to learn the basics of collection views and how to implement them, how to subclass, subclass collection view cells, and how to use extensions to divide up our code into logical sections. And extensions are a feature in Swift. If you are following along in Objective-C, you'll have to use uh, pragma marks to achieve a similar kind of uh, code division. Um, and just as a disclaimer here, uh, we could have used a collection view controller for this tutorial. However, we're going to do everything in a view controller with a collection view, uh, which is a little bit more manual, but you'll, you'll learn a little bit more from this lesson that's beneficial uh, for uh, an iOS developer. So open up Xcode, uh, select an iOS single view application, and let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so let's jump into our main storyboard and get everything set up uh, the way we need to. Um, actually, I'm going to start off by changing the background color on the view controller just to be something something else. <laughs> I'm going to make mine orange. You can make mine whatever color you like. Uh, go down into the object library and type collection view and drag a collection view, not collection view controller, onto your view controller. And uh, let's go ahead and center that, get it into position. Okay, looks good. And uh, let's go ahead and just pin this in the center, go over down here to resolve auto layout issues, and let's just reset to suggested constraints uh, so we don't have to worry about positioning. Uh, now, <clears throat> with our collection view in place, let's go over and we are going to create a new Swift file. And we are going to call this uh, collection view cell. And we will create that file. <clears throat> and we are going to set up this class. So let's start off by importing UIKit, which contains our collection view cell uh, information. So class collection view cell, which will inherit from UI collection view cell. Let's get that set up right now. And let's pop back over to the main storyboard here. And let's expand our document outline to show what's in our view controller. So inside of our view controllers view, you see we have the collection view that we added. If you expand the collection view, you can see that we have the cell. We have what's called a collection view flow layout, which lets you toggle basically between uh, vertical and horizontal layouts for the collection view, which I'll show you once we've implemented uh, once we've implemented this the first time through. So what we need to do now is subclass our cell. So select your collection view cell and go over to the uh, class inspector and let's go ahead and call that or use the collection view cell that we created and get that set up. And I'm actually going to increase the height and width of mine just slightly, just so we can see the contents a little better. I think that's good. Um, and one other thing before I forget, uh, we need to set a reuse identifier, just like we do in table views. We're going to dequeue these from a collection view. Looking up an identifier, we have to set this or we will get a runtime crash. So I'm going to just going to call mine cell. You can call yours, whatever you desire. And um, <clears throat> let's go back down to the object library here. And I'm going to be looking for a UI label. And I want to drag this label um, into our collection view cell. So try and center that just right. And uh, let me kind of drag it over to the ends. And uh, let's go ahead and clear the default text. I'm going to center the text in that cell, and I'm going to go back, resolve auto layout issues, and reset to suggested constraints. All right, so that should be pinned the way we want it to. 
I am also going to change the background on the cell so we can visually see uh, the cells once we've loaded them. I'm going to just use a blue for mine. You can use whatever color you wish for yours. And we also need to create an interface builder outlet for the label that we just added in the cell. So let's go ahead and open up the uh, split view or the assistant editor and look for the collection view cell. With your storyboard over on the other side, go ahead and locate that label and control, hold control, uh, click and drag over to the cell to create the outlet. And let's just call this um, cell text, something generic. Okay, so we've gone ahead and associated that interface builder outlet connection. So we're all set there. Now we need to actually start doing the legwork in our view controller to get this thing up and running. So go back over into our view controller that we started off with and um, let's go ahead and get this set up. Uh, actually, there's one more thing we need to do before I forget. Go back in your assistant editor. We need to create an interface builder outlet connection for our collection view itself. So uh, let me actually show you what I mean here. We want to select our collection view, control click and drag over to the view controller, and we need to create that outlet and call it collection view. Uh, this is something we would not have to do if we were using a collection view controller, uh, but you'll, you'll see why in just a moment why we need to do this. Uh, so let's go ahead and define a data source for our collection view. Let data source, eh, let's just call it people. Let people equal an array of names, um, Alex, Jessica, Daniel, Roger, Mary, and Alice. Okay, and uh, now that we've set up our data source, we need to <clears throat> implement the necessary protocols for UI collection view data source. Uh, this is something that would normally be handled for us if we were using a collection view controller, but since we are not, we have to implement this ourselves. And this is where we'll use an extension to uh, achieve this. So outside of your view controller class, we're going to create an extension on view controller, which is the name of our class here. Uh, and this is going to implement UI collection view data source. And let's go ahead and take a look at this data source. And you can see now that we, ha we have build errors right now because there are some methods we have to implement uh, and until we do, uh, we will, until we implement those methods, we will get build errors. So let's command click into this protocol and take a look. Uh, so <clears throat> just like table view data source, we have two methods that we have to implement. Everything else is optional besides these two. Uh, one is the number of rows for the section, and the other one is the actual cell that gets returned for each item in the data source. Uh, so let's go ahead and implement those now. We have number of items in section. And for this method, it's going to return people.count, or the data source, uh, or the, the count of the items in our data source. And we also need to implement one more, uh, the cell for item at index path here. And um, let me just... Go back into the standard editor here and see if we can move this down. And okay, so <clears throat> let's go ahead and DQ this cell and return it. So let cell equal collection view dot DQ, reusable cell with identifier, the identifier we set in the storyboard and also passing in the index path uh, as the, uh, the required parameter. We will cast this as our subclass cell, uh, collection view cell, and uh, we will then return it. And uh, before we return it, we want to assign the text. So cell dot uh, cell text dot text equals people at index path dot row. 
So now we've assigned uh, some, some labels for uh, every row of our cell, and there's one more thing we need to do. If you were to build this right now, you would not see anything load. Why is that? We have to assign the data source for our collection view by hand. This is one of the things that we, we lose this benefit from not using a collection view controller, and this is a very, very common mistake to make. So, and the reason why I created that outlet to our collection view is for this very purpose. Collection view dot data source equals self. So what we just did is we told our collection view that, hey, we are conforming to or implementing the necessary protocol functionality for UI collection view data source, but we need to assign that to the collection view. So by using self, because we are implementing it in this view controller, we have now associated that data source of people to be used with our collection view and the necessary collection view functionality is going to fire. So that's a very important step. Uh, so let me just double check and make sure we didn't miss anything here. Uh, I'm going to just double check my cell cell and our main storyboard. So let's go ahead and run this. I'm going to use my iPhone 5S and let's see what we get here. <clears throat> okay, and as you can see, everything looks like it's working just fine. Uh, so two more points I want to touch on before we wrap up here. Uh, the use of extensions and what benefit we get from that. Uh, as I pointed out in the learning uh, objectives, extensions are ways to uh, divide up our code into logical trunks. Chunks. We could have just used uh, UI collection view data source uh, up here, and that would have been fine. We could have implemented these two methods inside of our view controller somewhere down here, uh, and that would have worked too. But in Swift, it's considered best practice to uh, use extensions to divide up things like your table view data source and delegates, your collection view data source and delegates, or any custom protocols. That way you can divide up all your functionality and your view controller can just focus on what it needs to do, controlling views. It's uh, Think of it as a separation of concerns. Um, and it, it helps avoid the problem of the fat view controller where you have just everything jumbled uh, in one view controller that you know eventually creeps up to a thousand lines and, and we don't want that. Uh, or if we do get that, we want to at least uh, have a nice clean way of dividing things up and that's why um, extensions are encouraged to be used in Swift. Uh, so the last point I want to talk about uh, is on our flow layout for the collection view. And if we go back into our view controller um, and we take a look at this, and you look at your collection view flow layout and go over to the attribute inspector, you see that we have a scroll direction of vertical set. Well, we can just easily switch this to horizontal and let's take a look at what happens now. So now we have a horizontal layout. So this is kind of cool. You can depending on what your layout designs are for your application. You can toggle between vertical and horizontal or use a mismatch or, or I guess a, use them both uh, depending on if you're using multiple collection views or not. Uh, and one other, one other point I want to touch on here is if we wanted to do any customization um, for our layout, you can go into our, with your collection view, go into the size inspector and you see all of these properties that we have. Uh, we have cell size, we have header size, footer size, minimum spacing, section insets, all of these we can manipulate to control how far cells are spaced apart and where they should start relative to the next one. So let's just say I want to decrease the minimum spacing between cells. I can adjust those values. I can, um, let's see if I can add some, some insets. So you can see right here that my cell is, is moving down because I'm creating some padding from the top. Uh, and let's go ahead and put that back and into vertical and just take a look at it, you know, kind of see what that does visually. <clears throat> and so, uh, yeah, you can, you can tell there's a less space between the cells, uh, and it's really, you, you, can, you can adjust all of those for whatever layout you're trying to achieve. 
uh, and, that, and that'll do just well. So uh, that wraps up this tutorial. Um, I hope this was helpful. The finished project will be available on GitHub. The link to GitHub will be in the description. Uh, and as always, if you liked, uh, please go ahead and give that a, a thumbs up and like the video and subscribe for more future tutorials. It definitely helps. So thank you so much for stopping by.